Our uh, next speakers are uh, Ramon Torres and Rogelio Perez from uh, Telnix, and they're going to be talking about Anycast IPs and Container Router for SIP services. Right. Um, hello, everyone. I'm going to talk today about Anycast and Container Router for SIP services. This is uh, great timing because we're uh, going to be expanding on what Grassman just uh, presented. Uh, we're not going to be uh, focusing on open SIPs, but mostly on the network side, and also how can you leverage Docker routing uh, and bundle it all, all together with open SIPs, get something out of it. And by the way, uh, I think the open SIP team has done an amazing job by implementing the classroom module. It's a very elegant solution for a complicated challenge, so I think they said we're a big round of applause. So our names are Rogelio Perez and Ramon Torres. We are the telephony engineers for uh, at Telnix. Telnix is a next generation uh, carrier who provide uh, telephony services, messaging, network, and other products as well. Um, we'll take you today around um, multiple slides that will show you how we build what we call the container router mechanism. Um, and we're going to start with motivations. What motivated us to build this? So, um, a few years ago, we decided that we wanted to have total control over our uh, our platform, and that means the network where it's uh, sitting, and also the telephony services or telephony engine, as we call it. So, we start working on both of them at the same time uh, with these goals in mind. It had to be resilient failure. I'll take you to the promised land of the five nines. It has to provide a superb quality of service, of course, and it has to be ready for growth, or in other words, to scale fast. Um, with these goals in mind, we went ahead and started working on it. This is how our network looks today. We have global coverage in three different uh, continents. I don't know if you can Yeah. There's no map in that, right? Well, there's some America, Europe, <laughs> Asia. You can uh, fill the gaps, I guess. <laughs> um, and you can see our, our, our points of presence around the world and uh, our next uh, sites that we have in our world map. Um, the important part of, about this is backbone. The link between all of our sites is we own them, and that means that we can control what's going uh, what's going on with them. We can prioritize traffic, or we can say how routing is done, and we also own the IP space. So that gives us total control over the network, which in turn allows us to run any kind of stuff like that's what just explained. This is how our telephony engine looks like. As you can see, we use the um, we use the a distributed architecture paradigm with microservices running inside Docker computer. Um, this allows us to do rapid deployments and automate all of them. So we have both of them. We have a, a private global network and we have a distributed architecture. And we ask ourselves, how do we leverage both of these assets to achieve the goals that we <coughs> described before? And the answer is Anikus routing plus container router. Uh, we're going to explain both of them. Ramon will now start with the Anikus routing. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me okay? <coughs> yeah, no? Okay. So uh, the, the main purpose of using Anikus in Tennis was to have the lowest latency as possible with our users and also to have uh, systems very resilient to failures. So um, to illustrate this, we have the following example. We will have the same service running in three different locations, uh, London, Amsterdam, and Frankfurt. Um, like Rafael mentioned before, uh, this service will be running inside Docker containers. Um, in order to do any cast, we will assign the same IP address to each service and the same weight. 
So they have the same priority in routing. And routing is based on uh, proximity using uh, BGP routing. So here we have uh, an example of uh, two users that are sending traffic from different locations, but the traffic is being routed to the service that is uh, closer to them. So we get like a um, geographical uh, load balancing thanks to BGP routing and we minimize the latency. Uh, we also get uh, resilience to failures uh, because if one of the sites goes down, the traffic will automatically route to the next closest service to the user. If the service goes back up, uh, the routes will be announced uh, to the network and once they're propagated, uh, the traffic will be rerouted to it. Uh, this looks good on paper, but it has some issues. In a real scenario, we can expect failure from other elements in the network or in the system. <coughs> so for example, in this case we have that the site in London is up and it's announcing the routes, but the service is not responding. So the experience for the weak user would be that the calls would be right to London, but they would not um, be completed. And customers that are close to London will experience an outage. So we fixed this problem uh, thanks to the container router solution that Rokele will explain now. Thanks. So to explain how container router works, we're going to use this simple example. We have the Telex backbone on top, linking all the sites. On each side, we have a router that's connected to a server uh, with a LAN. And inside the server, we have a Docker container run. First, we, we, we start with uh, installing a BGP daemon inside the server. We use the Quagga software suite that allows us to perform advanced network techniques like BGP and any kind of stuff. Then we continue by peering that BGP daemon with the router upstream. <laughs> then we install yet another BGP daemon inside the container. This BGP daemon peers with the BGP daemon beside the server. And finally, <coughs> we instruct the BGP daemon inside of the container to announce a public IP to the world. I'm talking about public IPs here because nobody wants to deal with NAT issues and VoIP services, right? But everything also works for private IP space. So, um, this looks fairly complex, like why so many layers of BGP routing, uh, but it turned out to be very practical because we were able to automate all of this uh, using our orchestration um, tool, and also it's very scalable. Once you have it running, let's say you have the router and the server uh, part already working, and you can just scale horizontally, and you can spin any number of containers, each one of them announcing their own IPs to the external world. Of course, this wasn't built on the day. Back in 2016, we just, when we had the network ready, we went the standard way and we just assigned a public IP to the container, one for each container. We quickly moved to the tanker router mechanism, and then the evolution was last year with container routing. Upcoming is cloud routing, which is probably <coughs> material for a future presentation. <coughs> so to understand that evolution and how those methods compare, we're going to go back to the same example. And we're going to start with IP per container. So this is a very standard thing to do. You just announce a public IP from the router in the site. And then you create manual routes to get down to the container, right? Manual routes to get to the server, and then manual routes down to the container. Traffic flows, and everything works. So what's the problem with it? Well, if your tanker, if you have a failure at the tanker level or at the land <coughs> uh, layer, the traffic will still be routed to uh, to the router, but there will be no one uh, listening to it. It's just downtime for you. 
that's why we moved to Kinko Gravel. Install the PGP daemon, we announce the public IP from that layer. And that means if the tanker disappears or, or I mean, the server or the land has any kind of failures, then you still get um, your traffic. But what if your application dies, if you have a segmentation fault, or service run out of memory, or an upstream <coughs> service, <coughs> then you have the same issue. Traffic is still around to the server. There's nobody listening to it when you have a top. And that brings us to container router, where we announce the IP from the container itself. And why is this important? Well, traffic is routed the same way all the way down to the container. But now if your application crashes, all you have to do is install the container to shut down itself. And before doing that, it will withdraw the announcement. And that was, I think, one of the questions for us before. When you withdraw the announcement, you're forcing the network to reroute the traffic automatically to the next site that's healthy and that's closer to the user. That's a simplification of how the whole thing, whole thing works. Here we see a comparison of the three methods. So with the standard weight of IP per container, we get resiliency for site-wide failures. Whereas for tanker router, we also get resiliency for failures at the server level or at the local level. <coughs> But then we continue rather we get all of them plus resiliency to the failures of the application layer. One of the key um, elements of, for all of this to work is convergence time. Convergence time is the time that it takes for the network to reroute from a failed node to a healthy node. And uh, to show you how quickly we do this, I'll uh, we'll go down to the danger symbol. <coughs> okay, so on the demo, I will use the following elements. A slip line that will be outside of the Telnix network, then open it with a version 2.4, um, the cluster module that was explained before. Uh, open SIPs will be in a Docker container in two different locations, Amsterdam and London. They will have the same Anycast IPS line and the same weight. And the third element will be just an echo server that will just answer the phone calls and send the RTP that it receives uh, back to the SIP client. Uh, what, I, what I will do after is uh, simulate a failure in Amsterdam. And we will see how the traffic reroutes to London with a very low convergence time. So. Okay. I will have uh, two terminals here. Uh, okay. We will have uh, Amsterdam on the left and London on the right. And I'll be using a sender to capture the traffic on the OpenSIP Anycast IP. If it's not very clear, at least you will yeah. be able to see activity. The active node is the one on the left, and the mm -hmm. passive node is the one on the right. Oh, okay. they're, they're both active, but the closest node is the one of them. I will capture traffic. I, I will send traffic using CP, uh, one call per second. So you can see traffic flowing through Amsterdam here on the left. And what, what I will do next is simulate a failure in Amsterdam. So I will stop the container, and you will see how the traffic reroutes to uh, London. That was an unauthorized, unauthorized call right there, so it wasn't me. Scatter, <laughs> moment. Okay. So stopping the container in three, two, one, go. You can see how traffic reverts to London almost immediately. And now if I start the container again, uh, Amsterdam will announce the rust to the network. And once they propagate it, uh, the traffic will be rerouted to it. Okay, starting the container now. This usually takes a little bit longer because of the propagation time of the announcement. <coughs> okay, here we go. It's back. Okay, 
So we just saw how we can have systems with uh, HA and transparent failover for the users thanks to the combination of Anycast and Container Router. <coughs> All right, so we're almost done with our presentation. We're going to just uh, talk a little bit about uh, some conclusions, some notes about what we just saw. The first one is about the convergence time being lower than three seconds. This is very important. <coughs> that number might ring a bell, right? Three seconds. If you keep it lower than three seconds, then that it means in that window of time, if there is any SIP message that is lost, then it, it will be automatically handled by SIP transmissions. So if we keep it down three seconds, it means that no message will be lost. It's actually around one or two seconds. Most of the time, yeah. Um, the second one is Erika's routing for SIP. As Rasmus explained before, Erika wasn't built for stateful dial, um, protocols like SIP. So it solves one problem, but it creates a thousand more problems, right? So a lot of them have been uh, solved by the cluster module, the OpenSafe's latest version. There are a few the others that remain, like TCP uh, is one example. So we have other solutions for, for that kind of issues. Um, but the important thing is that uh, all those issues are being tackled and I think the, 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 the cluster module is a great contribution for the open source community because it will allow us to make this more and more um, popular. And the last one is about automatic failovers. So what you just saw in the demo was a vanilla config file for OpenSIPs. There's nothing special about it. It's just running inside Docker container. And all that Ramon did was start it and stop it. We're not telling it, hey, resume calls, announce this or that. Uh, it's all handled automatically by the um, network. Well, uh, one correction. There is a Quagga um, BGP daemon inside the container, of course, that is handling the announcement. Um, but that means that it's a self-healing mechanism. <coughs> And once you have it um, done in a generic way, you can replicate it as many times as you want. In fact, we created this for SIP services, but we ended up using it for any other service that can be dockerized. And we think that's pretty cool. And that's it. We'll be happy to answer any questions. No? Well, thank you very much. Thank Alex. You.